today I'm going to be installing a um, water methanol port injection kit from ProMeth. It's a 8 port V8 universal kit. Uh, it comes with the solenoids, it comes with the plumbing, uh, and I had to purchase the nozzles separately, but they offer them on the website as well. I have already drilled and tapped the holes going into the ports on all sides. I'm gonna have to shorten these up, probably about as short as it'll go because this little T is about as wide as the ports themselves. So I just have to cut these down to fit them in. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to use this solenoid because how it was uh, set up originally, this used to be the setup on my diesel truck. You have the pump that directly feeds into the, um, into the injectors and it has a, um, a valve so it doesn't uh, siphon fluid while uh, it's drawing a vacuum as a check valve in mine. But this kit comes with uh, dash four fittings. So everything's nice and plumbed up. You don't have this, uh, this plastic line that could get burnt or, you know, could break. And then you have, you know, fuel essentially just going wherever it is. A 50-50 mix, but it is still, um, still flammable. So we're gonna start setting this kit up and uh, see, uh, see how that goes. Got the first one in here. Took uh, quite a bit of persuasion to get it uh, down to the size it needs to be. It's quite a substantial difference in the length right there, but three more to go. Finishing up some wiring on the uh, methanol injection. Uh, just got one wire goes to the ground, same ground as the the pump. Is the solenoid needs one ground, one power. So I'm just going to tap right into the power for the pump that comes on from the pressure switch. Right there, it's no performance pressure switch set to five pounds, five or six pounds. So that means whenever you get boost pressure at that point right there of five, six pounds, the pump's gonna turn on. It's going to activate the solenoid, which is going to send it through the lines into the, um, into the jets. It, uh, it's stainless steel, four AM lines going to it. I've got everything done except for this one because I broke the nozzle. Yep. I'm trying to bend these tubes right here to get them to line up with the holes. Pulled out a little too hard and it just snapped off the nozzle down there. Um, I had to order another one. Nozzle here because I broke it. So there are eight injectors. Each port gets one injector. And I decided to add a ninth injector here in front of the hat. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of methanol that can be sprayed in here it's about 2500 cc's a minute um, but I also have a controller for that that I've always had on 
100% the snow performance controller. I can have it come on at as early as six pounds of boost and also I can incrementally adjust how much, uh, what percent it's, it's injecting. So you can go from, you can go from like 65% and ramp it in over, you know, a second or two or over, um, over boost pressure. Uh, so I might do that because I've got uh, a lot of methanol that would be injected at a low boost pressure, which won't be as much horsepower, so that'll probably start quenching and also run the uh, air fuel ratio a little richer than it needs to be. Um, but it'll also help cool everything down, <clears throat> especially with that ninth injector right before the intake and then on each port it has an injector to keep everything really nice and uh, evenly distributed. I also added another oxygen sensor. Um, I've got the one over here that goes to the Phytech, but that, the data logging on that Phytech is a joke. Um, it's extremely hard to really tell what's going on and also um, you have to manually turn on the data logger on and off after each pass. The uh, power grid system comes on whenever you hit 2500 RPM is what I have it set at. So it records every time as long as I have the chip at the bottom, that little micro SD card. So I've got a, um, a box here, another box for the grid that will log the, um, the air fuel ratio. Uh, also, it logs everything else, my timing, um, boost pressure, the, the grid does the, uh, does the MAC valves for the uh, boost controller, CO2 and all that. So it's just gonna be everything all in one. So I don't have to go checking two different data logs. And then I can go into the FlyTech from there and uh, start adjusting my fueling accordingly after I'm actually getting a good reading for the, um, for the uh, air fuel ratio. So that's pretty much everything I have done with it right now. It is, ready to go aside from verifying timing after taking the intake off and i am still waiting on the torque converter i'm going to check for leaks and all the fittings make sure i don't have any leaks because that would not be good potential fire hazard going to check all that out and then Hurry up and wait for the torque converter to show up for the power glide. After that shows up, I can throw the power glide in there, put the cover and everything on, and then finish the uh, finish that belly pan that's got to go on here because that cross member sits down lower. So that'll be a little bit of aluminum sheet metal work. Uh, that's pretty much all. Everything that's been changed. So, um, hopefully, hopefully that converter will come in soon. Um, get back out to the track and, uh, make some more passes and see what this thing can do. Alright.